happening with volatility and give us an idea of this chart that you want to talk about, which is all to do with the calm before the storm. Now, yes. right, let's kick off with that. VIX, otherwise known as the fear index, and it's been in the comfort zone for many years, as we know, uh, but we had a reawakening of volatility last year. That still remains, and, and now it's elevated above a new floor at 15. Now, what this means is it's actually reshaping a new market regime, hence the mean reversion setups that we keep on seeing, but also a new investor risk-averse mindset. Where is the mean, though? Uh, well, well, the floor is at 15, as we can see there at, that, at the base of that channel. And the, the mean, shall we say, is probably closer to the 22, 23 mark. So that blue channel there on the chart. So you're saying basically, I mean, we were talking about, you know, there's these rallies in the S&P up until, I guess, yesterday. Can the VIX stay that elevated even when markets are still rallying? Basically, yes. I mean, we can have high vol in rising markets, but yeah. what this sh shows at the moment is we're likely, this is likely to be a dead cap bounce on the S&P 500. Uh, also, uh, because of the seasonal trends and ongoing lack of liquidity from early this year, as reported by some investment banks. Okay, so the point is, the, point of, uh, the path of least resistance is now what? Well, a high beta is, is here to stay, and, and we're likely to have more non-consensus surprises, uh, particularly in this seasonality, negative seasonality period from May onwards. Now, I know seasonality didn't work so well last year. December should have been a good month. It turned out to be the worst in, in many years. Uh, but it has been a blast from the past. This May, just past, was the worst uh, since the 1960s. And that is, is for now, silenced the whole uh, bullish melt-up scenario. Uh, we need to be more risk averse for further downside risk. Uh, looking at the seasonality chart, uh, if, if we, uh, yeah, I think we'll bring it up now if we can, guys. Yeah, why don't you talk through it a little bit more about what what you've been kind of forecasting too? Yeah, there we go. So here we have it, basically on the SEAG uh, Bloomberg function. It basically shows that cycles drive markets. This is the annual seasonality chart. And it basically shows us the probabilistic uh, paths, good, bad, and potentially ugly. Hmm. Uh, the good path is the 2017 uh, uh, path in, uh, in blue. In yellow, that's the ugly uh, 2018 uh, scenario that, that we just saw. Hmm. And, and the average is somewhere in between. So that would be the good chart. But essentially, uh, look, look for a uh, for continued negative seasonality into uh, uh, August. Um, and the biggest uh, onset will be Q3 September, October. Go away in May, sell in May and go away and come back on St. Ledger's Day or Labor Day, right? Yes, exactly. I mean, the most reliable seasonality trends are the, the, the September-October uh, fall crash cycles. Uh, the sell in May is statistically viable, but not all the time. Uh, this year, I think it will work better because it hasn't in the past year. And so there's a little bit of mean reversion in the market. Also, from a big cycle perspective, and I, I look at composite cycles together, uh, that's suggesting a downturn into next year for the next few years. So all that, all that shows, all that demonstrates is we're likely to have below average risk asset performance. Okay. Well, how does that affect then, I suppose, and this brings us on to the US-China dance, which is the, the, the next uh, uh, chart that you wanted to bring up here. How does that play out with the so-called H shares, i.e. Uh, the Hang Seng China Enterprises uh, in, Index, uh, the, 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 which is slightly different, but the, the correlation that we have here between that and the S&P 500? For everyone looking at this in past years, that correlation and dance was going up in a straight line. So the yep. correlation was positive, and that was part of the growth story. Uh, yep. All the way up here, it was, and then we saw this divergence. Yes, the divergence then happened from summer of last year. That continues, and that's part of the growth uh, breakdown uh, story on tech stocks, but also this, this uh, continuing trade tension between the U.S. and China. Um, and that's what we're seeing right now. Now, what's interesting is there's a China rotation. Uh, so now China is leading the U.S. according to this chart. You can see there the blue line breaking down from the white line uh, early on, giving a lead signal that there was a, a vulnerability in the market. And that ended up being the canary in the coal mine, China breaking down, BART stocks last year. What we saw in December, in other words. Yes, exactly. So that, that lead rotation continues. Yeah. Um, and although we're having a little bit of a bounce from oversold conditions now, uh, the technicals and the correlations are suggesting... And this is the correlation chart underneath here, is it not? Yes, it, it is. And it's, it's, it's suggesting the correlations here and in general are suggesting that we rotate uh, lower. How... I, I think a lot of guests that I talk to that are not technicians like yourself say, you know what, te 
technical analysis doesn't really matter now because the sentiment is just so dour when it comes to the U.S. and China that it's really hard to look at these moving averages and whatnot. And you kind of look a little bit more about this in this next chart about the trade war sentiment. How do you think that's going to play out amidst these technicals that you're seeing? Uh, so technical analysis or behavioral technical analysis, crowd psychology, is, is always at the heart of markets. Uh, and I would say now more than ever, uh, since volatility has really reawoken and m much of us are sitting in uncertain waters trying to work out what the next move is. So that's when it really comes, comes, becomes yeah. strong. Uh, here and now, what's interesting, of course, is the year-to-day record gains on China uh, reversed. And you can see that on this monthly chart. Uh, this is a candlestick chart. And, and all that shows you is just the sentiment uh, intra month, um, and we can see a reversal in play. Um, and, and so we need to watch the 12 month moving average. Uh, if that breaks, uh, then that will be uh, bearish for the 2017 uh, lows around 2440. And then for people looking for longer term targets, 2000 will be an important psychological level. Now, on the trade sentiment perspective, technicians do look at sentiment. And I do know that Bloomberg, for example, have uh, measured the number of times trade war has appeared in Chinese media. And that was that spiked to record highs last month. So although trade, trade war sentiment has been with us for a long time and the markets climbed a wall of worry, it didn't last month, according to Bloomberg uh, mm. surveys. So I really think it's starting to break the ice now. G20 will be key. Very quickly, all the charts you look at, what sort of picture is being painted right now? I know it's a toughie, but give us a, just a very brief overview of what you think is going to happen in various asset classes, very quickly. Uh, very quickly, I, th I think we, volatility continues. Uh, that will create a selective market where we will need to kind of look for uh, the more risk-averse safe haven trades. Uh, we may see a revisit of, of the old highs on, let's say, Western equity markets, but I, I don't feel that that is sustainable. The risk reward is just too poor. Uh, late cycle in terms of this very long-term uh, cycle that I look at. And that is suggesting a turn down into next year. Many of the economic uh, figures, including, let's say, uh, inverse yield curve inversion, is suggesting a 12 to 18 month uh, pressure in the market. And that ties in with the technicals.